Hey guys, so today I'm here to talk about another set of JoJo chapters. This being chapters 79 to 84, The Mystery of King Crimson. Now, this is actually a little late, even in just recording, not even being put up, because I had guests over the house for a little while, and I couldn't exactly sit down and do this when I've been trying to entertain them. And normally I try and stay a little bit ahead of the anime. Anyway, so I'm getting to this now, and even though currently the anime got into a little bit of the beginning of the mystery of King Crimson. I'm not watching it specifically until I put this out just so that you know it's still a little bit ahead of the anime makes me feel better about it you know whatever. So Bruno uses his zipper in interesting ways in this particular fight like you know zipping down zipping down like cable wires using sticky fingers to just propel like propel himself down using a zipper or hiding a phone like inside his head sort of that he can take out by unzipping and stuff very unique i mean we've seen certain things like this before but i feel like we haven't really seen the extent of it still yet so i don't know i just really liked how it was like he could just like go down really fast i think that's in the fighting game actually where um, I think it's Eyes of Heaven. I think Bruno is able to do that in Eyes of Heaven. Is it Eyes of Heaven that has Bruno in it? I'm not sure. Whatever game has Bruno in it, I'm pretty sure that that can happen. I think I've seen some gameplay. But I also like that he was hiding the phone in his face, like I said previously. And in this set of chapters, we finally find out what the boss is standing. We don't, we don't know what he looks like still, but we find out what his stand is. He's communicating mainly through his stand so that you can't see his physical body. His stand being King Crimson. And King Crimson can apparently eradicate time and force it to skip. He has the ability to forecast time, I guess, or just things around him in general, where he can see, I guess, kind of a few seconds in the future, or maybe several seconds in the future, and he can see, like, almost like after images, kind of, where he can see the trail that they will take, the path they'll taste, take, he forecasts it, and he can, like, I'm not really even 100% how it works, but he can eradicate parts of that, I think, and just force you to skip forward, or something, because you see... I mean, he can also use it to dodge or attack because it's, because he can see what happens beforehand. But we can see this when we see, like, Jotaro, he he's on the boat, and the next thing he knows, he's out of the boat. Or the next thing he knows, their cats have moved from over there to move over there, you know? And he knows something's going, like, all to fuck. And he's trying to get in touch with Bruno, but Bruno's just having a very terrible day. Now, the thing that's a little confusing to me is there's, like, halfway through, I think, the set of chapters, um, the brooch turns into the turtle. I get, I'm assuming it's the turtle that Trish has been hiding in this whole time. He can turn into um, the turtle. They say something like they use cells of that turtle or whatever, and they turn, he turned it into the turtle, and he, and the, and the, the stand still activated, sort of, so like, King Crimson got sucked in to the stand uh, that is Mr. President that the turtle has. I looked it up. The turtle's name's like Mumbo Jumbo or Jumbo Mumbo or something like that in his stance called like Mr. President. And it's just, I don't really understand how that works because I understand that Jodano can create life out of nothing so he could take a tooth and turn it into a fly or he could take his brooch and turn it into a turtle. But I don't really understand how he can take the brooch, turn it into the turtle, and then the stand still activate? Like, even if, if this is... So first of all, can he turn it into the turtle by using his stand from so far away? I'm assuming, because I'm pretty sure I read something about, like, taking the, some of the cells from the turtle. So can he, can he use his stand when it's so far away to turn it into that? Or am I misreading and he actually... I mean, he doesn't... He can't, he can't turn the turtle into a brooch, right? So it has to be the brooch turns into a turtle, but even if he turns it into the turtle, shouldn't, even if it's the same being technically in that turtle, does that, why would this, that, that turtle then have the same stand? I, shouldn't the turtle not have anything? Because it's technically not even the same being. I mean, I guess it is because it's, he uses cells to make the turtle, but it's like a little weird because it's not, you know, it's not the same spirit, almost, so should it have the stand? I'm, like, really confused on how that works. But in the end, it didn't work at all. The, the fucking King Crimson saw through it, so it didn't even work anyway. But also, another big thing to note here is this is the set of chapters where we turn traitor. 
Bruno Buccellati and his gang turn traitor. And really, it's only him, Trish, and Jodano. Trish doesn't turn traitor, but he was always planning on killing Trish. I, I mean, like, the boss was. And Trish has nowhere to go at this point. So Trish comes, okay? And so it's Bruno and Jodano who both planned on turning traitor really from the start because they want to take over as boss or at least kill the boss or do something because there's the drug trade going on and Bruno's salty because that's the whole reason his dad died and like Jodano just doesn't like how all, all this shit's going on so they're going to turn traitor and then so he says you know if you step on this boat you're going to be traitors too and Abaccio steps up because he's like you know working for Bruno gave me purpose he gave me something to do and without him I have no purpose so I'm just you know, I don't want to be a listless man again. You, he's going. He has no other reason why he shouldn't go. Mister's just kind of like, man, we're going to get rich off this. It's going to be fine, whatever. Also, Mister seems like the type to be loyal anyway. Like, no, no, no. Mister especially doesn't really feel to me like he should be loyal to the gang and more like he's loyal to Bruno because Bruno helped him out and he seems like a nice guy and stuff. And then we're left with... Narancha and Ab um, not Abacho, Narancha and Fugo. Fugo's like, this is fucking stupid. No one's gonna get and help you. This is, you can't, you gotta know this is terrible. And it's just him and Narancha left. And Narancha ends up realizing that him and Trisha are really alike. You know, both were abandoned by people that were supposed to love them. Both were mistreated by people that were supposed to love them. And they have, they had nowhere to go. And they still have nowhere to go other than with Bruno. And so Narancha ends up swimming over and joining them again. And so it's the whole team except for Fugo. Fugo officially leaves. Which I get, like, honestly, it's really fucked because Fugo got, like, one fight. Fugo got a singular fight. Most of it has been, like, Mista. Well, not really Mista, but Mista has been a part of at least three or three different fights, right? We had Kraftwerk, we had Grateful Dead, and then we had um, White Album. So Mista's already got three fights. You know, Naranja's only had one. I think Abaccio only used Moody Blues one time. You know, whatever, whatever. But Fugo is like the Okuyasu of the season where his, his stand is actually very dangerous, you know? But unless they want to have people perma-die, which I mean people do perma-die in part 5, so I don't know what the issue is, he, he can't use his stand. Admittedly, his stand will also hurt his allies, so it's kind of shitty. But still, Fugo is officially out. At least as of right now, Fugo is gone. I don't know if he'll come back. I don't think he comes back, if I'm being honest. Um, I've also heard some people say that Araki really regrets this point in the story. Um, because if you didn't know, I guess slight alternate spoiler warning, but Fugo was actually supposed to turn traitor against Bruno, like supposed to be a spy or something like that, and betray Bruno, but Araki went through something very personal, very troubling, and he ended up not being able to do that to his fictional characters, so instead he just wrote Fugo out of the story. And I heard, I'm not sure if how true it is, but I've heard he actually regrets doing that a lot. He wished he stuck with his original plan. So part of me wonders if the anime is going to go ahead with that and go with the original plan, or if they're just going to adapt it the way it initially was, which with Fugo just, you know dropping out of the story. But yeah, as of right now, we've lost a character, not through death, through his own, you know, resolve. He's gone. He doesn't want to be part of this. You know, Fugo. He's left the story. Bujalati has officially turned traitor, revealed traitor, revealed the fact that he's a traitor to the boss. We're probably going to get stuff attacking us now because we're fucking traitors. They're traitors. And I mean, let's see what happens with Trish. I what, what, where are we going now? Are we just on the run forever? Like, I don't really know where we're going from here. What? Uh, Trish at least isn't dead. Her hand is, like, barely zipped on, but she's not dead, so I mean, better than nothing, right? Anyway, let me know what you thought of the mystery of King Crimson in the comments below, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!